everybody! Today I posted my review of the 1953 Disney animated classic Peter Pan. I thought it would be nice to review like I did last week where I reviewed the live action Alice in Wonderland. I thought it would be nice to review one of the either the sequel or the live action uh, Peter Pan versions that have come over the years since the 1953 version. And so I put it to my Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter I'll put a link in the description section. Definitely want to check that out. And I asked my Twitter followers, which version of Peter Pan do you want me to cover? And they resoundedly chose the Steven Spielberg 1991 film, Hook. So we're going to take a look at Hook today. And Hook is a film that I remember enjoying as a child, but it's not one that I'm especially nostalgic for. It's not one I watched like a million times, like Little Mermaid or something like that. And I, I think that it is a really, really enjoyable, charming film. Uh, but it definitely, as far as holding up, there are some things that didn't quite hold up for me on the rewatch, but it's still altogether a very enjoyable film. So let's talk about the pluses and the minuses of Steven Spielberg's Hook. The film takes the very clever premise that Peter Pan decided to leave Neverland and grow up. And what if he, you know, forgot everything? What if he forgot who he was? So, so we get Robin Williams playing the part of Peter Pan and he has forgotten who he, who he was and he is a businessman and he is very serious and very dedicated to his business. This was early on, 1991, and he has this, uh, one of those brick cell phones and he is always on his cell phone. He can't make his kids games. He is very, very, very cross with them all the time. One of the things that was a little bit hard for me on this rewatch to kind of absorb is that I'm just so used to Robin Williams being such a cheerful person and such a cheerful character that it was really odd for me to see him yelling and being so mean as he is in this film. Like I think, I just don't know if Robin Williams was the right fit for this film. And it does take a long time before you get to Neverland, and so he's unpleasant and mean for a long time. And he and the family end up going to London to go visit his grandma Wendy, who was the person who helped find him adopted parents when he was younger. <clears throat> She's getting this hospital dedicated to her or something, and he's supposed to speak at the hospital dedication. And so this is evidently the, one of the first times he's been back to London in a long, long time. And he arrives there and Wendy is played by Maggie Smith and she looks so old. It's crazy because she is, this is 91, so this is 25 years ago. So they did an amazing job with the makeup on her. I, she looks older then than she does now, on, like on Downton Abbey. That is pretty impressive. Through, through various events of the beginning of the film, Peter's children, his daughter and son, end up getting abducted. And there's a letter there from Captain Hook and he has he has drawn his hook all the way around the house, all the way upstairs. He's crashed in the, the uh, glass and drawn his hook all the way upstairs into the wall. And then you see his letter with a sword through it on the, on the door. And so of course they're all freaking out and Grandma Wendy, she knows what's going on. And so she tells Peter his history, his backstory and everything like that. Now, one thing that surprised me on this rewatch is how dark and scary this early part is. I mean, it definitely has some horror elements. Uh, the way that the music is, the way that the lighting is, the way that everything's all the hook and the lines in the wall and everything. Like it's pretty scary for kids, I would think. And, and just the darkness of this early section with the mean Robin Williams and, and I don't know, like what kid wants to think about like uh, themes of workaholism and, and just some stuff. It just, I don't know, it was a little bit of a downer. Of course he doesn't believe at first, but he meets, he ends up going anyway to Neverland. He meets Tinkerbell and who was played by Julia Roberts in this film. And he ends up confronting Hook, who was played by Dustin Hoffman, who is brilliant in this role. And Dustin Hoffman basically makes a deal with Tinkerbell and Peter that they'll give him three days in order to be more prepared. Because what would be the victory in defeating Peter Pan like this, where he's not at his top form. And so that's when he then goes, he meets the Lost Boys and they are kind of your typical sort of 90s era Nickelodeon 
kids. <laughs> there is some tonal disconnect in this film. There are moments that feel really Nickelodeon, really silly, bright colors, food fights, stuff like that. And then there's these dark, you know, parents screaming at their kids and <laughs> and almost horror inspired moments and things like that. So it's a little bit all over the place uh, in a way. But there are some really fun moments and the Lost Boys are led by this this boy named Rufio, who I, I do remember as a kid thinking Rufio was pretty, pretty cute. And he has this, uh, he has this kind of skunk hair <laughs> with the red stripes and everything. And he's very confident and very cool. And so they end up teaching Peter how to become Peter Pan again and to use his imagination. And these sections are a little bit Nickelodeon-ish, but they are fun and, and sweet. And each of the boys kind of has their own different personality, kind of like with the Mighty Ducks or the Goonies or these kinds of shows in the late 80s, early 90s. So uh, it gets to the point where the three days are up. It's time for uh, it's time for Peter to go and get his kids, but the whole time that these three days have been happening, Book has been indoctrinating Peter's son Jack and reminding him of all the horrible things his father did and kind of training him to become the new Captain Hook. And you even see this sort of creepy scene where you see Jack in all of the pirate gear <laughs> and he's about to give and hook's about to give jack a, a pierced earring <laughs> and that's when peter comes and they have some really fun uh, action scenes there's some really fun sword fighting and things like that there's emotional moments that I won't give away uh, bob hoskins plays me and he's really fun in it and uh, like I said, Dustin Hoffman was having the time of his life in this part. He totally hams it up and as, as Captain Hook. And I, Williams is fine, Robin Williams is fine by this point. Uh, he's much more comfortable, I think, as Peter Pan than he is as the grown-up version of Peter Pan. <laughs> Uh, and so it starts to kind of get momentum, I think, really towards the end. The music is great throughout and uh, you have great sets. I really enjoyed that, like just the attention to detail of like the pirate ship and and you know, kind of old school. There's no green screen, obviously, except for the flying sequences. But even those are done very well. They look really good. And uh, there are some really odd moments of, of sort of adult humor that are sort of sprinkled in there that I didn't really like. There's a really strange scene where Tinkerbell, Julia Roberts, becomes her full size, uh, normal size, human size, and she kind of tries to make out with, <laughs> with Peter Pan, which is just sort of weird because Peter is married and he's there to get his kids and, and he, like, I don't know, just the idea that Tinkerbell is secretly in love with Peter Pan. I don't know why they needed to put that in. Uh, you kind of get a happy ending and it's really charming. It's really sweet. Uh, it's done with a lot of flair. I wasn't bored ever while watching it. And I, I think it's an entertaining film. I just think it's a little bit tonally dissonant, kind of disconnected all over the place. Uh, you get some of all these different things and some of the moments don't work, some of them do work, but I think just the energy of all the performances involved, the sword fighting, the action, the sweet moments between father and son and Peter realizing who he really is. A lot of those sweet moments really kind of won me over in the end. And so I think it is definitely worth seeing. And uh, even though it's sort of an odd little film <laughs> in the end. So I would give Hook a solid B. I think that it is a solid entertaining film. So let me know what you think about Hook. Put in the comment section below and uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye!